Welcome back to Holden's Golden Age of Wargaming, the no muss, no fuss wargaming channel where I get straight to the point, at least while I'm doing Let's Plays. Uh, we are now on part 7 of the Austerlitz playthrough, and it is turn 4, and it is the Allied side's turn. Uh, okay, so we suffered a little bit of a setback there, but nothing too major, nothing too major. Uh, and basically, I'm looking at the overall situation here now, and this is what I see. I have a left flank, um, center, and this is now the right flank. And we'll go over them one at a time here. So the left flank. I looked at this. I really like to get that artillery, but I just don't have enough movement, and I don't have enough pieces, don't have enough units here. So... The left flank has, is going to have to play it safe. So we're going to move. We're going to switch these units out. So this unit's going to go down here or down here. First of all, I have to move these guys up into the town of Telnitz. And that gives a 10 times triple. is 30 defense. That's a little bit improvement over 21. And this unit's going to go here. I'm not sure what I was doing here when I uh, moved that cavalry in there. I must have thought I was the French because the Allies cannot stack more than 10 points and that would be 13. So that's not happening. Okay, next up we have the center. And this is, uh, I feel like uh, the waves rolling up on an ocean or rolling up on a beach, I should say. The, uh, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try it again. So I can manage to get one-to-one -one odds. So I'm going to have a 50% chance to knock that stack out of the castle. Uh, this unit here will cross the stream. First one across. So one, two, three, and we're across. Uh, might be able to make things a little bit better next time. Can cut off uh, retreat, for example. That would be nice. So I doubt the French player is going to let me do that. And then we'll move these units all up to uh, to attack. So the super tree is 1-2. This is zone of control. 1-2. 1-2. And this artillery comes up. 1-2. To join in on the attack. In fact, we need him. Because if we don't have all of this, we don't get 1-1. One one. Doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right. Now here I really waffled on this one as well, the stack of uh, nine. See, it's only nine. Two cavalry units, which is prime uh, purpose in life, is to cover the center's flank, and these guys' flank. So, <clears throat> but nine is getting to be awfully small for a total number. And these units can reach. So the cavalry is going to move into that town of boys, oh boys, Cobblenitz. So up they go, one, two, and one, two. So there they have a defense value of 27, thanks to the triple effect of the town. I, I wish it was a little bit further down that town, but that's the way it goes, and we'll see what the French do with that. And hopefully they'll have their hands full down here with my right flank. So let's move these. So um, remember way back in the beginning when I had my big grand plan, and that was that uh, once all the units that were over here got over here, we were going to all pull back and go up and uh, try to exit off the, uh, the side of the map where we get three victory points for every strength point. And uh, but things have gone well. Things have gone well. However, there are more French units coming up here. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we could win it. So what I have decided is I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it this turn. Really try to put some losses on the French, push them back. Um, if it goes well, then we're going to just go for the victory by destroying French. If it doesn't go well. And then I'm probably immediately next turn going to start the long retreat up this way, trying to get off the map. We'll see how that goes. 
All right, so let's do this. So this infantry is moving in, one, two. This infantry is moving in, one, two. Oh, because it's over control. This artillery is coming across the stream, one, two, three. I'm going to move this infantry up to attack this lone cavalry. And I'm going to move this infantry, or that would be one, two. And this infantry is going to move over uh, to support this artillery on the knoll. Uh, down here we have this cavalry. So, well, yep, he uh, pushed us back and destroyed that cavalry unit, but we have an opportunity here to isolate and destroy this stack of 15. Can we do it? We're going to try. I have to be in this hex to have a zone of control here. And, of course, I already have a zone of control here. So he will not be able to retreat, but I have to have something there. And it's going to be this beautiful 10-5 cavalry. So up he comes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to bring these artillery up to help support. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And this cavalry, or sorry, this infantry is going to move here just to hold. So our line is as long as the French's line. So not so easy to flank. Uh, so one. Okay, so let's start. No combats here. We do have a combat here. Can we push the French out of this castle? All right, so we know that they have 60 points of strength. And what do we have? 11, 28, 40, 54, 64. The two artillery bombarding. 64 points against 60 is 1 to 1 odds. And we know that we need a 1 to 3 to make them retreat. If we roll 4, 5, or 6, ah, we retreat. Now, this will be the second time we've tried this. Uh, hopefully, the third time is not the charm. Hopefully, it is the second. Let's see what happens for the Allies. Come on. Oh, yeah. That's a major problem for the French. Okay. So, we get to push them out of there. And where do we want to push them? Well, I'd love to push them here, and I'd love... Well, I don't think I want to push them there. But I'd love to push them there, but we can't because of our zones of control. There's only one place. So, even through you, the winner gets to decide where the, uh, the loser retreats to. There's quite a few... Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that make it so... Really, a lot of the times, there is no choice. So this, this stack has only one place to go, and that's in behind the castle. And then I will move up. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? Makes sense. That's 68 points in that castle on defense. Let's see the French take that. Okay, so success. We are getting across the stream. Now, we could come over to back these guys up. Of course, we have French are uh, going to try to make us do otherwise. All right, so the next combat is here. So this guy is having to attack here because um, if uh, one of your units is in the zone of control of an enemy unit, you have to make sure that every enemy unit is attacked. Always have to make sure every enemy unit is attacked. So I could not ta take everything and attack this stack here. I could because as soon as I moved this infantry in this hex, I became adjacent to this French unit, and something that is capable of it needs to attack that. Now I could attack it with the artillery. I believe I could bombard it with the artillery, and that would cover my bases, whereas I have something attacking here. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but I have another plan for this artillery. So I can't do that. So this infantry will attack there. So we'll do, we'll go left to right here. Uh, these guys will attack the stack of 10. So we have 8, 17, 25, to 10. That's 2 to 1 odds. 2 to 1. <sighs> I could 
Okay, four to one. Really is what I Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look here. I already have, but I've forgotten. 10, 15. 15. And I have 10, 19, 25, 25, 34, 40, 46. That's 3 to 1 odds. And I'm not even including what's underneath here, the ace. So I was 53 to 15. I'm going to use, I was going to use this two to, this little cavalry to soak off and attack this stack and die purposely to kill the other. But I'm, I don't think I need to do that. So I actually think, and you know what that means though? That means that uh, I'm not 100% sure that. Uh, all friendly units which are in the zone of control of enemy units must participate in an attack. No defending unit may be attacked more than once. Yeah, the attacking player may choose which attacking units will attack each defending unit as long as all adjacent friendly units participate in an attack. Okay, so I'm going to have all my adjacent friendly units participate in an attack. Enemy units. Uh, I'm wondering, can I do this? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if I can do it. Does the artillery bombarding that unit let? Let this guy off the hook. Does it? Does it? She determined the eyes. Intelligence busters. No, 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 no. That does not help me. That doesn't help me. Intelligence. I'm like, actually, I didn't realize that they could participate in two types of attack. I did not know that. Oh, okay. Yeah, they can bombard or they can attack adjacent. Not both at the same time. Uh, yeah. All enemy units which have friendly units so getting through, must be attacked. So, reading that, the attack player has a choice of resolving attacks in any order as long as all adjacent enemy units are attacked. So, reading that, they have to be attacked. I have to attack that unit with something. But attacking it with the artillery is an attack, right? Bombarding it. So I'm going to assume I can get away with this. And I am sure some of you watching will let me know if I am wrong. And if I'm wrong, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't think I'm wrong. So I'm going to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this unit actually attack this stack. So 10, and I have 13, 21, 30. Oh, wait a minute. 13, 21, 38. No. 13, 21. No. <laughs> 13, 21, 30, 38. 38 to 10 is 3 to 1 odds. And unfortunately, he can retreat to that hex. So I need to roll, if I remember correctly, I need to roll one to de destroy him. Probably not going to happen. I don't want an exchange. Do not want an exchange. That would be a six. All right, so let's, uh, all right, so these three units, this one, this one, and this one are attacking here. Plus this artillery for three to one odds. Here we go. Here we go. Be good to us. Be good to the allies. <laughs> oh, that's an exchange. Man, oh man. Well, the good news is. We get to take these units off. 
Yes, we do. That's 10 points. That's 10 points. Alright. And you are not there. You are here. Nice try. Ten points. And we have to match that. We have to lose ten points. So I have a choice. I can either lose both of these infantry. Or just this one. Oh, my thirteen. My thirteen strength infantry. So I'm going to have to lose that. All right, well, that gives, uh, oh, my jeez. That gives the French going from 6 to 19. And uh, that increases our demoralization to 19 points. That is, you know, actually, well, no, I guess because you can get victory points from exiting off the, the, uh, the map board. So it would not be exactly the same victory points to demoralization. Um, okay, so we've done that one, and then uh, we gain 10 points as the allies. That goes up to 32, and that increases the allies' demoralization to 32. That was a costly victory, a costly victory. So we're going to move that 9-4 in here, advance into the hex. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm happy about that or not. Uh, thinking in chess terms, I lost 13, they lost 10. So I think the French got the better end of the stick there. Okay, so that is it. And uh, that means that this artillery, and I'm going to mark my artillery under fire, of course, as always, with a marker. This artillery here is going to fire at this cavalry all by itself. We know that's one to one odds. Let's see if we can push him back. All right. And we do not. However, we do not suffer the attack of retreat. Why? Because we're an artillery piece. Okay. Next up. Uh, okay, so this stack here is, we're adjacent to it, so we have to attack it. And it is, uh, 6, 9, 14, 42 defense in that town. It's 14 triple. So we're going to use this poor little piece here to soak off. And that cavalry is going to charge all by their lonesome uh, into the town of Blasowitz and die. Die. Why? Because 2 to 42 is, what, 1 to 22 odds? And, well, you can't get worse than 1 to 5. And that means attacker is eliminated. So this cavalry, we just order them to their deaths. Aren't we nice? Uh, order them to their deaths. And why do we do that? It's called a soak off attack. We want we did that to free up this eight strength infantry to attack this fifteen stack because we want to kill it. So we decided that hey, we'll we'll trade two points. Or 15 points. So off that comes, and that would give the French, uh, they would now be at 21 victory points, and we would now be at 21 demoralization for the Allies. Okay, and that leaves, so that is, that's, that's taken care of. We don't care about that anymore. Now, we're doing this. We have 15 here. Let's see how much can we bring to bear on this. 8, 14, 23, 33, 42, 48, 54. 54 to 15. Well, we know that gets us safely to 4. No. 3 to 1 odds. 3 to 1 odds. So, and we know that he, this stack, we know he can't retreat here because this, he, that hex is within this unit's zone of control. And he can't retreat here because he's within this unit's zone of control. 
So we got them. All we need are three to one. Well, we have them no matter what. We just don't want to roll six because we don't want to exchange. We'd have to lose 15 points. And that would, just looking at it off the bat, that would be this unit and this unit lost to take this unit out. We don't want that. So we don't want a six. If we roll a six here, uh, I'm not going to be happy. Come on. No six. No six. You son of a... <clears throat> Unbelievable. All right, so that means that this stack of French fought valiantly to their death <laughs> and uh, destroyed quite a few, uh, uh, some Austrians and some Russians along with them. All right, so uh, let's just repack that and take these off first, shall we? So that's six. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was a bloody round. Fifteen. 15 points for us. That moves him up to 36 victory. The French. And then we have to pull all these guys off. Mm. All right. Let's put that nine back where it should be. I see that the... Uh, the uh, counter exploder is a little touchy when you have a whole bunch of stacks together. You gotta be pretty careful. So, anyways, we lose, so we kill these 15 points of French. Uh, 15 points, so that puts us up to 47. So, we're getting, we're getting pretty close to, uh, Oh yeah, we have to do the uh, demoralizations. We're up to 36. Jeez. 36 and... French is up to 47. Demoralization. So, all of a sudden we're getting money close to that 70 points where... Uh, Every, well, all that side's uh, units attack and defense strength is halved, and those under control. Getting pretty close here indeed. Uh, okay, so let me uh, remove the markers now. Combat is over. All I have to do is decide whether this cavalry is going to advance here. I think I am. I think I am. Yeah, that forces these pieces to engage with this unit. They come here, which they will. I'm trying to take this out. And I have, I mean, I'm leaving my artillery kind of open, but I mean, I can't get through here. So I am going to advance into the hex. Uh,. Doesn't look like I move these poor units up. So I'm uh, cheating here a little bit, guys, and uh, moving them up because I forgot to move them. So they're both moving up three. Uh, okay, that was quite the combat round. That was a lot of uh, a lot of soldiers died on this turn, um, and that changes things all around again. Is that better for the allies? I don't know. I mean, they did take the stream here, but uh, this was an exchange, and this was an exchange, so... Ugh. Ugh. Uh, all right, well, that's I think that's it for uh, Part 7, and uh, we're going to flip the game turn counter to show that it is now the French's turn, and I will see you next time as the French. Have a great night, and I will see you guys next time.